Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for allowing me to wave on to this committee and thank all of the witnesses for being here. Gentlemen, what I have behind me, ladies and gentlemen, is, is a chart of receipts that I've asked constituents of my district to send in to us. What you'll see here, first of all, there's an $80 to fill up a tank, $80 receipt to fill up a tank in Brunswick, Georgia, $135 in Waycross, Georgia. One constituent pointed out that they spent $334 just last month on gas. And behind each of these receipts is a story. Sam from Ellabelle, he's having to cancel his Veterans Affairs appointment because he can't afford to get there. Kayla from Ware County summarized the pressure facing the working class Americans by saying, and I quote, I can't afford to go to work, but I also cannot afford not to go to work, unquote. We are forcing our seniors, our single parents, and our veterans to choose between groceries and gas, between a regular paycheck and regular fuel. It all comes down to the Biden administration's refusal to recognize reality and instead wage a war on fossil fuels. I, for one, do not believe any of these assertions that have been made here, that it is Putin's fault or that it is the big oil companies simply gouging the, the, the prices here. That is not what it is. This was happening before Vladimir Putin, his unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. It has happened since the policies of this administration started taking place. General McMaster, I want to ask you something. Ukraine, in the geographical area that they are in, they, they have the second biggest known gas reserves. They also have a lot of natural gas. In your written testimony, General McMaster, you said Russian military incursions have focused on the 10% of Ukrainian territory that is home to 90% of their energy. Look, Vladimir Putin is evil. He is the devil himself. However, he ain't dumb. He knows what he's doing here. General McMaster, I want to ask you, can you elaborate more on the notion that Russia is weaponizing energy against the free world? Congressman, of course, Putin's been engaged in this behavior for quite some time. He's weaponized energy against Moldova, against Bulgaria, against Romania, and, and of course we see it against Ukraine and now against Europe broadly, and, and Germany in particular, to try to soften uh, our, our, you know, our weak and our resolve in connection with the response to this brutal invasion of Ukraine. And he wants more of it. He wants to gain more and more access to oil reserves, as you mentioned, in eastern Ukraine, where he's focusing this offensive and, and what one analyst is called a, the Great Ukraine Heist, associated with what Russia is trying to do in the Donbass region uh, in, in particular. But he's done the same thing in Syria as well. You might remember in February of 2018, Russian mercenaries attacked U.S.-supported Syrian Democratic forces in the Euphrates River Valley. They were going after the Conoco oil facility because Putin knew he didn't have the money he needed to help reconstruct the, the country he helped to rubble uh, in, in, in Syria. You see the same kind of adventurism in eastern Libya, for example, on the part of the Russians. So Putin is trying to gain more coercive power, not less, over the global economy uh, through his control of, of hydrocarbon exports. And, and, uh, and, of course, it's in our interest to make sure he can't do that. Let me ask you this, General McMaster, because about a, during the time, the week of the invasion of Ukraine, I, along with two other members of this committee, uh, Representative Wahlberg and Representative Curtis, as members of the Conservative Climate Caucus, we were in Brussels, we were in Europe when this happened, and we were there to look at what Europe has been doing in the way of, of clean energy. And it became very obvious to us that Europe has jumped the gun too much and, and that they have, they, they have closed down, for instance, they, they've shut down some of their nuclear plants. And it, it, it's an important lesson, I think, for us to learn here in America would you say it's, it's realistic to imagine that Europe or the rest of the world could become energy independent of Russia on renewables alone in the very near future? No, that's impossible. And especially if you take nuclear out of the equation, which was what Germany did as well. I mean, sadly, my home state of California is about to do the same thing, to shut down a, a, a nuclear plant that now that, that now uh, is uh, it generates ten percent of the state's electricity. It makes no sense at all to to do that. And so, and, what and we General need McMaster, is all I'm of sorry. The above approach. I'm sorry. One one final thing: the, the American oil industry. We could help with natural gas. Is that not true? We could help Europe here. 
That, that's that's absolutely correct. And, and of course, this is this is a solution that is important for energy security, but also it's an important solution because everybody's burning more coal as a result of the of the con constraints on the oil and gas market. So we we need to export more gas, not only because it makes sense in terms of economic sense and in, in terms of energy security, but it also makes sense in terms of uh, of climate and CO2 reductions and getting off of coal and bridging into cleaner forms of energy. And oh, by the way, natural gas here in America is cleaner than the Russian gas gas, correct? Absolutely. Senator Kramer and I penned a, 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 a long piece on this, a long essay on this, and, and, and maybe a policy solution that could help incentivize cleaner extraction and transport of, of natural gas, consistent with the way that we do it here in America. Good. Thank you, General McMaster. And I'll yield back, Madam Chair. Thank you.